So here is probably the most common way to mount a trans cooler is with both the inlet and the outlet port facing down. Exactly how the transmission shop mounted the cooler on the Silverado here. The problem with this is it airlocks part of the system, which we'll get to that in a second. But the reason most coolers are mounted this way is because it's a lot easier. The transmission lines just come up and then they hook up right to the cooler. Theoretically, at least from what I read online, is fluid is going to come up and it's going to run across the bottom here. And before the rest of the cooler can fill up, the fluid that runs across the bottom is going to airlock that port. It's going to cover that port up and all the air up here is not going to be able to escape. Now that's a problem because if you only have half of the cooler full of fluid and the other half locked with, you know, air lock, just full of hot air basically, then you're only using 50% of what the cooler can actually do. Which, you know, it negates the point of putting a big trans cooler on something if half of it or less is actually being utilized. So I'm going to go drain the rest of the water out of this real quick. And then we're going to see how problematic this actually is. Okay, so water is flowing out of the bucket, or out of the uh, cooler here, in the, into the bucket. And we have one that's full, two that's full, three that's full. This one here, you can see it got a little bit of water in it, but it's not actually flowing any water. So I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I have ten rows here, and only three of them are full of fluid. So 70% of this cooler here is not actually flowing any fluid through it. So that's obviously problematic if you have a trans cooler and only 30% of it's filling up. I'm going to uh, shut the water off and maybe see, turn the water on quicker and maybe it'll get some more water going up through it. I don't know, we'll just see here real quick. Okay, so it's flowing pretty good now, and we got one, two, three, four, five that's filled up. And this one here is going to fill up because this side over here isn't completely airtight, so it's actually pushing the air out. You can see water dripping out there. But theoretically, if this was a completely sealed system, no, these five right here would never fill up. This one, I'd have to look at the video, but this one might not have even filled up. But so the water's coming out of here pretty quick. But again, the point that this illustrates is when you mount it with both ports, both ports down, and it's probably more problematic with a narrower cooler, what's going to happen is the fluid's going to run across and it's going to cover up the port and not let any air from the rest of the cooler escape. So it, it's a very inefficient way. To, it might be easier, but it's a very inefficient way to mount the cooler. So. Yeah. Cost savings is probably the only reason to do that, but again, you're only get, you're not going to be using the full potential of the cooler. So I'm going to turn the water up real quick and see if that does anything. Okay, so we got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, so we did get more rows filled, that's good. We got eight filled, but these top two are definitely still completely dry. So regardless, it appears that you're gonna have a system where a portion, a, a percentage, depending on how quickly the cooler fills up, of the cooler is gonna be remaining empty because it will get airlocked, because there's no way with the amount of uh, coolant coming out of this side that this air is ever going to be able to get out. So that's interesting how with both ports down, like most manufacturers do, it airlocks the top half of the cooler and makes the system less efficient. Okay, so now I got the cooler, whatever, the cooler mopped up in one of the positions that it could be mounted correctly. And that's with the 
inlet on the lower side and then the outlet on the upper so it forces the cooler to fill all the way up and all the air runs out the top and that way theoretically the whole cooler should fill up instead of leaving 50 to 60 percent of it airlocked. Okay, so there, now you can see every single hose, all of them is com are completely full of water. And you can see the water still leaking out of them. But they all completely filled up. So in this orientation, the entire cooler is actually being utilized. Okay, so here's another way to mount a cooler and uh, oil transmission cooler. And this is the way I mounted it on the 68 because it was what worked best because that cooler, which I'll... Uh, go over in another video whenever I actually get that all done is the cooler is really wide so it wasn't possible to put it sideways and we already went over why I can't put it with both sides down so I had to do both sides up like this so we have the inlet over here the outlet over here so all the fluids get to run down and it's gonna fill the cooler up from the bottom to the top but because our outlet is also at the top the air is gonna run out uh, of the cooler as it fills up so theoretically this should also completely fill the cooler up just like as though you mounted it sideways so that's what we're gonna see here real quick okay so turning the water on Okay, so here you can see, apart from the uh, water leaking out of that crappy little PVC fitting, the cooler filled up from the bottom to the top, and because the fitting, uh, the outlet was at the top, it allowed all the air to escape, so now every single tube is full of water, meaning the whole cooler is actually being used to cool fluid. 